Hey there, guys. It's Dana Tamara. Welcome to uh, 13 Moon Mystic. I'm really excited to bring this full moon lunar eclipse report to you. There is so much happening in the month of December. Uh, so much. And we've already in this year uh, been through so many astrological, um, gosh, things in astrology that we haven't seen in years, thousands of years in some cases, and a lot of change, a lot of growth, a lot of transformation. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people and the first words out of their mouth uh, usually are something to the effect of or some variation of how have you been? How was 2020 for you? Oh my gosh, I can't wait for this to be over or what a hard year it was. And I want to start off this entire recording by saying this, even if it was a challenging year for you, which it was for a lot of people, let's come to a place where we can instead say something like what a transformative year, you know, and that's not to negate or bypass anything that's gone on, the loss, the devastation, the confusion, the fear. I'm not trying to bypass it. I'm simply trying to say, let's look at um, a different perspective, just a different perspective as we move into 2021, and especially with this full moon lunar eclipse. So I, I want to kind of get down to, um, as my dear friend Gillian would say, brass tacks with this um, full moon uh, recording. Um, and before we totally begin, I just want to bring us to a state of peace and stillness. So with every recording, with everything I begin, I uh, remember to drop into grounding and stillness. And so we're going to do that first. If you haven't done this with me before, go ahead and grab maybe a notebook, uh, something to write in, um, something, maybe make a space for yourself where you can um, create a sense of uh, quiet for yourself and know that you can listen to this at any time, right? But, and so you can pause it and all of that, but try to make it so that when you're listening to this, this is just about you and your inner ear, okay? Uh, so as soon as you're ready, you go ahead and close the eyes, take a big deep breath in through the nose and exhale all of your breath out through your mouth. <sighs> just do that twice more. So I do that pattern of three inhales and full exhalations uh, purposefully, one for present, one for past, one for future. Uh, not in that order, obviously, but definitely to just clear the mind of anything that we've placed in any one of those realms uh, as, as law, as rule. And so just begin to find a sense of stillness, a sense of quiet, And feeling into your root, allowing yourself to root into whatever it is that you're seated upon. Let the outside external just become kind of faint and quiet in the background. Let what is inside you start to become louder and more of your guiding light. And just really bring yourself to a space of being here now. So just be completely present. Mm. And take two more breaths like that and just complete stillness, eyes closed. And if ever you want more time than that, please feel free as always to record, I mean, to stop this recording and come back. Otherwise, go ahead and uh, open the eyes. And here we are, completely present. Uh, apparently, I was a little excited to bring this to you today. <laughs> so, um, Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, really excited to talk to you guys about this. This is a full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini. I was just out uh, this morning at 5 a.m. watching this uh, moon set and it was spectacular. I tend to go to bed early these days, so it's no problem for me to get up uh, super early and enjoy the stillness of uh, you know this astrological miracle that happens every day and we just don't even pay attention to it, right? Um, but this full moon is pretty powerful. It um, comes at the end of a very tumultuous, transformative year. And the astrology for December is pretty, uh, as if we don't have enough, if we, as if we hadn't had enough change already. We've got uh, this full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini with the North Node uh, 
so that means the sun's in Cancer. I mean, the sun's in Sagittarius and the moon is in Gemini. And this eclipse is the North Node, which is the future. Okay, so this is all about movement forward. Uh, not only do we have that happening, uh, but we then have the new moon solar eclipse happening on the 14th. And then we also have the solstice on the 21st, with, which just so happens to be uh, around the time that Jupiter will conjunct Saturn. Now it will conjunct Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius. And this is called the great conjunction of 2020. Now I want you to keep in mind that we started off the year on January 12th of 2020, uh, right around that full moon <laughs> lunar eclipse. Uh, in the sign of Capricorn, we had Jupiter, Pluto, uh, Saturn, the Sun, Mercury. It was that big, what we call the stellium, and uh, it was opposite the moon. And so we had all these planets uh, sitting there, and January 12th, as you know, really started to amp up the year, and we started to see what was kind of a little snippet of what was going to go on. Think about this year as being in a um, sort of a snow globe. And then right around March, we had, and if you go back and look at the astrology, there's pretty some pretty epic astrology uh, from March as well. You go around March, the whole world basically shut down and said, you know, we have this crazy virus, don't know what to do with it. Everybody go inside and stay inside and, you know, that was March. This is December, nine months later. You know, we have had this where I look at it as a period of gestation, a period of what is it that needed to be removed from our life, willingly or unwillingly, so that we can birth something new. Uh, now, the theme for this week in my yoga classes is curiosity. Uh, I wanted so badly to call out rebirth, but I've used that one too much. So curiosity was really powerful for me. And um, I just feel like it's one of the attributes of Gemini that we kind of overlook, right? And so I, I'm going to actually share my screen with you guys. So let me share my screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about for those of you who don't really. Um, so we've got this full moon Gemini uh, coming at, I want to make sure I get the exact time right, 1.29, 1.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at 8 degrees. So 8 is the number of um, abundance, infinity, infinite potential, and it happens on November 30th. Um, you know, the theme of this whole year has been transformation, hope, courage, love, like always coming back as we kind of pivot through this year, like a little weevil wobble, coming back to that center of who we are. And now we've got this full moon lunar eclipse. Now, uh, remember that the, that the moon, the full moon is, is um, it, it's in Gemini, of course, so it's affected by Gemini attributes, but it's also affected uh, by other aspects that are going on in the planetary uh, orchestration. So that's kind of what I'm going to go through today. Um, so we have a full moon in Gemini, lunar eclipse. Uranus is opposite Venus. Uranus is a planet of change, miracles, shifts, um, unexpected happenings. Uh, it's opposite Venus. Venus is about love. It's about um, your finances. The moon is also quincunx to Venus. I'm going to go over that. Sun is quincunx Uranus. Um, Mercury is sextile Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn, and the new moon eclipse, the solar eclipse, happens on December 14th, 2020, and Saturn moves into Aquarius on December 21st, uh, 20, uh, 2020. Uh, what, a, what a year, what a numerology, astrological, numerological, uh, <laughs> just a, a, a whole hodgepodge of um, things that have happened scientifically and also out in the ether, right? Of things that we can't really explain, but yet we can. So when we look at this chart, I want to explain it to you. So if you find the moon there up at the top and you just draw that straight red line to the bottom, that's the sun. So the sun and the moon are opposite each other at eight degrees. So you see the moon is sitting in uh, Gemini. We have had the past lunar and solar eclipses have been in the uh, south node. And now you'll see that little squiggly uh, symbol right there, uh, pretty close to the moon, 11 degrees away from the moon, but it's in the same sign. It's close enough to say uh, confidently that this lunar eclipse is also about our future. So I'm going to get into that too. This is a really powerful month, you guys. I want you to really 
um, soak this one in and listen to this recording over and over again. You know, Gemini is a, is a mutable sign and it doesn't have this like yes or no black or white energy. It's more of a, it's a, it's a more of a duality. It sees both sides. It's, you know, it's half divine, half human, half yin, half yang, half sun, half moon, half black, half white. And so we have this idea of duality uh, with Gemini. And, and, you know, it's really important that we understand that duality is, is reality in this human existence, because uh, here we are, you know, we're this, we're this human body uh, living in a global society where, you know, I like to say uh, we're all one and we're just reflections of each other. But, but slash and the reality is, is that we are separate. You know, if I'm sitting in a room talking to you, in that reality, in that moment, in my humanness, we are separate. So we have to, we have to be able to recognize that that is happening. So that's what Gemini does. Gemini wants us to understand that duality is necessary. But what one thing about Gemini uh, that is missing in that equation is that Gemini also is a lot about curiosity. It's not about saying, "Well, I'm right and you're wrong." Right? Let me um. I always like to, when I'm talking, sometimes I like to go back and forth. So in duality, sometimes we get to this, this point where we say, oh, well, I'm right and you're wrong, or I'm black and you're white, or I'm um, healthy and you're not, or whatever, whatever the, the opposite is, right? But that's not what Gemini wants us to do. Gemini wants us to say, huh, well, isn't that curious? We're different. Hmm. That's very interesting. And be curious about those differences. Be curious about those points in our life or those people or those instances that come up for us where we feel uh, and notice duality. Okay. And so what I want to get across is, is that my truth is my truth. Your truth is your truth. And uh, there's nothing wrong with either sides of those coins. In fact, they're both right. But what we want to do is we want to be able to find a sense of curiosity around uh, why or how uh, we can somehow meet in the middle. Okay. So uh, with this full moon Gemini, we've got an opportunity to think differently. We've got an opportunity to um, notice the moments in time where we separate ourselves, uh, maybe to prove someone wrong, as opposed to stepping into that space with curiosity as to how can we support one another? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen again. Okay. Let me get this big again. All right. All right, so um, so you see all these other planets everywhere, and I want you to pay special attention. Go straight down. You'll see uh, in Capricorn, which is the green sign, you'll see Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn kind of like all on top of each other. They have been doing that all year, and as they uh, have gone into retrograde and they go, gone back at different times, they, they're not on top of each other anymore. They're within close enough proximity that if you were to look in the sky, you'd be like, oh my God, they're so close. Are they going to hit each other? No, they're not because of where they're positioned scientifically, but their energy, you know, think about a planet is orbiting, it's spewing off energy that we can't, well, I can't measure, <laughs> someone can, I'm sure, but they're affecting one another. So that Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn conjunction has been sitting there all year and kind of messing with us, honestly. Um, it's been messing with us. And there's a dotted line, uh, you'll see it from the moon to those three planets. And then you'll see that same sort of dotted line from the sun to those three planets. And that's a quincunx. And I'm going to go over that with you as well. Now, what I want to do is talk a little bit about the eclipse. So um, like a regular full moon and eclipse make things a little bit stronger. Um, and it brings, it, it's like hitting the reset button on your computer. You know, you just kind of hold it down. It gets dark for a moment and then everything comes on and everything's been changed. This one in particular will bring your home, your family, your intimate relationships into like a laser sharp focus. So, um, you know, you'll begin to see, it's almost like if someone turns the lights out 
and then you open them again, you go, oh, whoa, I see things so differently now. That's an eclipse. Now we won't be able to see it here in the Americas. Uh, we will be able to see the, um, uh, we won't be able to see the solar eclipse that was, I was, I, what I wanted to do at the end of this year was take everyone on a um, retreat to Patagonia for the solar eclipse. So if you're in Patagonia or South America, you'll be able to see the eclipse, but we won't be able to see it here. Um, the, the, your emotions and your instincts, it's like the, it tends to increase around a, an eclipse. It's like you, you beam up just a little bit higher. Everything that you feel, you feel at a higher vibratory frequency which means that you are gonna be able to see any type of relationship that's out of balance, any negativity, you're gonna feel it in your body. Um, it, 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 it's a moment in time where you can reset your emotions from any emotional baggage that you've been carrying around, say since January, <laughs> which is so nice, you know? And again, I'm gonna go over the other aspects that we have happening that are going to contribute to the positivity of this, okay? Um, eclipses always signal a time of change in our world and in our lives. It just is a fact. And whether or not you uh, notice it or not in your life is just your own, your own thing. It's not like you have to hold on to the sides of your, you know, um, computer and go, okay, what's going to happen now? Or the sides of your whatever and be like, okay, what's going to, no, none of that. Just know that things will shift. Things will shift for you. And they could be on very subtle levels or they could be on, um, very strong levels. It just depends upon kind of how this hits your chart, what karmic work you've done, what still is open, right? But they usher in new beginnings and significant endings. Like, it's like a whoosh of air. Um, it churns up things that you maybe haven't been paying attention to. It brings to light something that maybe you haven't noticed or you've chosen not to notice. Um, and don't fear that. Don't be like, what, what, what? It's just, it brings something to light, a piece of the puzzle that you hadn't noticed before. And I, I encourage you more than anything to think positively. And I know sometimes that's hard, especially when we've had a year like we've had, right? Like we're just like waiting for the next shoe to drop or waiting for things to, you know, don't wait for that be instead awake and open to something new coming, which will be incredible. I mean, you just don't know. Um, so the first eclipse is on the 30th and it, like I said, you can't really see it, but it is extremely powerful. Um, it, it's gonna bring, because Gemini is about communication and there is an aspect with Mercury uh, and those three planets, it's an influx of information. It's a, you're going to get something new, uh, potentially that comes to you that you go, Whoa, this is so much. Oh my gosh. As if we hadn't already had enough information fed to us this year. Um, but something will come that's new and exciting and supportive. So just be aware of that. And, and this is how I want you to be aware of that. Okay. Um, I want you to limit your, um, unnecessary communication. I want you to limit any kind of negative communication. And, and by that, I mean, I don't mean mean or anything like that. I mean, like, if there's something that you have to deal with that's uncomfortable, see if you can just put it away for a moment or even a few days, if it's possible. Because if it evokes some sort of negativity in the body, just like put it away for just a moment allow things to move a little bit, limit the gossip, limit the negativity, limit, limit the things that um, create a sense of angst for you. And I don't mean ignore it. I mean, just limit and pause for a moment and allow yourself to co-create in your mind and in your heart, like what you truly desire. And, and if you had a megaphone attached to the universe, what would you want to say? You know, would you want to say, oh my God, this year has been so hard. It sucked. No. You want to say, oh, okay. Whew, what are the lessons that I learned this year? And what, what can I expose my heart to deep vulnerability about and grieve? What can I let go of? What can I 
pat myself on the back about as I accomplish, what did I overcome, those types of things. Because this is a North Node eclipse and this is much more auspicious than the South Node. South Node tries to pull us back into the past. South Node will say, wait, let's go back here and let's rewind. I'm gonna actually go back here. I feel like I need to, you know, South Node is gonna go, okay, let's, let's go back this way. Let's go back this way. We need to go back and we need to review. North Node is like, okay, you've you've kind of you know you've kind of went through the work and so get out of your comfort zone a little bit because you've done the work get out of the bubble um go out and experience the world uh, within reason right now um and embrace whatever these lessons were that came up for you and whatever has shown up for you as something that was perfectly divinely orchestrated and and um look for that silver lining don't be pollyanna but look for that silver lining that has brought you to where you are right now um you know north node is future north node is asking you what do you want what i know you've done all the work now what do you want so maybe even like five words of something that you would love to see in your new year just words not not like a, a specific tangible, just some words that might describe 2021 for you. Already think in that mode, okay? Um, the, the full moon and lunar eclipse in Gemini actually offers us an opportunity to open your mind and actually have um, courage, which lives in the heart, not just the belly, to, to think things, to look at things differently. So I, I can't express the, upon you enough to tell you that this lunar eclipse, all eclipses, are about starting over, letting go, bringing it in, letting go, bringing it in, letting go, bringing it in. Okay, so, um, and, and be open to new information. Be open to new information coming in. Uh, and that's mainly because of, of Mercury, but I wanna talk a little bit about Uranus in um, opposite Venus. So if we look back, I'm gonna share this again with you. If we look back at this chart, Actually, I'll keep it small for one second, just so I can share this with you. Um, if we look back and you see, where's Venus? Where is my sweet little Venus? There she is. There she is. Okay, so here's Venus in Scorpio, okay? In secrets, transformation, darkness, right across from uh, Uranus in Capricorn, okay? I'll make this big again so you can see it. So Venus is down at the bottom there in Scorpio and it's right across from um, Uranus in Taurus. So Venus opposite Uranus is a sign of change and uncertainty in love, in money, in um, home. Uh, unexpected events potentially can happen. Now, don't automatically go to the negative. I don't want you to think like that, even though it's a red line and sometimes that denotes like disharmony. I want you to think about um, unexpected windfalls, unexpected love relationships, unexpected shifts, unexpected, like maybe you've been living under the same roof, roof with say your spouse or your partner or your roommates or whatever, and uh, be open, you, you know, you've been in this quarantine and now be open to maybe seeing them in a different way so that maybe the relationship will shift. I don't know. I'm just, really want you to know that this is an opportunity to see things a little bit differently and hold space for those changes to happen. Um, it, it, you know, it, remember we're, we are a co-creator of our life, right? So we're not um, at the whim of astrology. We're not at the whim of our genetics. We're not at the whim of um, society. We're not at the rules of all these external circumstances, but we're also not the only creator, right? Like I can write down what I want in life and sure as heck, I know I'll get it. But if I don't co-create with that bigger source, then I'm missing the boat because it knows so much more than we do. And so I want you to understand that as you move through this life, you know, know that change is, is inevitable. It's the one thing that is is guaranteed so allow yourself to be open to something shifting and opening for you in the areas of uh, home hearth um, um, family love relationships money okay 
Um, and then the full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini is also quincunx to Venus and Scorpio. So when a moon, when the moon is quincunx to Venus, it increases our, it, it wants, it like shines the light on those aspects of love and money and um, uh, relationship and, and home. And so it's, it's, it's shining a light for our desire for, for a shift in those areas of our life. Um, and a, uh, this, is, this is important because for some of us, we've been quarantined and we've you know, done the best that we can to kind of stay quarantined and we've stopped traveling even though we love traveling and some people have still had to travel. I'm not trying to um, expose the duality. I, I, all I'm trying to say is that we've put ourselves in these situations in some cases where all we've had to look at is ourself. <laughs> And now we're like, huh, wow, okay, I'm kind of ready to open up a little bit. I feel a little bit different. I'm that chick in the egg. I'm pecking my way out now. And I, I feel like I've kind of dealt with some karma. Okay, so now what? It's that type of energy. And that doesn't mean that everything's going to completely fall into place and it's going to be rainbows and unicorns, but it does mean that there is an opportunity for you to um, expose yourself a little bit differently and others too. So remember that too. Um, and, and know that a lot of this that's gone on throughout this year, astrologically, but also just in our external world was necessary. We needed to, to, pause to take a look at what's going on. We needed to see really uh, the depth of our connection to ourself, where we were lacking, um, where we were maybe on the wrong path, and, and really learning how to hold space for people. Because this, the spectrum of what's gone on in the world in different global communities is, is huge. So if I can say anything at all, just remind yourself that you know, it's going to sound so prophetic, but love is really the answer and be in a space of deep love for self during this time. And so that you're so full, you have something to give. Yeah. Um, with the sun, queen Kunks Uranus, you know, Uranus is higher mind. So it's those, um, those higher thoughts, uh, you know, the, the unconscious mind. And so when the sun, queen Kunks uh, Uranus, it actually increases nervous um, energy and anxiety. So, you could get so much information that's kind of like overload. So be mindful about how much information you actually allow in and um, just really pick and choose on what, what feels good to you. Um, and then this is what I wanted to talk about with Mercury. So Mercury is actually sextile to that clump of planets, okay? And so you've got Mercury sextile Jupiter, what's well, really Jupiter and Saturn, but uh, enough uh, close enough to Pluto too. Um, it's just before Saturn moves into Aquarius. So if you look at Saturn, it's at 28 degrees Capricorn. There's only 29 degrees in each sign. So it's just about to move into Aquarius. It's going to hit zero degrees Aquarius uh, on uh, 1221. And it's going to create a whole nother plethora of information. But Mercury sextile, um, Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn is really about expansion it's about uh, um, transformation. It's about structure all at the same time, which is what we have been dealing with all year. But when Mercury sextiles it, it's, it's think about Mercury as the, as the messenger. It's communication. It's how are we communicating um, with regards to these aspects? Uh, how are we um, getting our message across, whether it's in personal relationship, whether it's in our business, our career, our, uh, maybe, there, maybe there's some karmic things you've been dealing with this whole entire uh, quarantine. Maybe there's just things that have come up. How are you dealing with them? Is it working? Are you allowing yourself the space and the energy and the time necessary to actually move through what needs to be moved through to purge so that you can come out on the other side of this um, just lighter? Um, you know, over the next few days and the next few weeks, you can truly use this brain, this mind, your imagination, even Mercury and Uranus, the lower and the higher mind 
to co-create that which you really desire. So with full moons, we're talking about letting go. We're talking about purging. Yes. But also being a space of being open to um, what could be next for you and what you really desire. Now that you've cleaned out your closet, so to speak, and you've done all this work, what is it now? Like that's really the the action that I, I want you to think about. And, and this is why too, um, so much you guys on, uh, December 14th, we have a new moon solar eclipse. And so in between, uh, the 30th and the 14th is a really powerful time to purge that which we need to purge, to forgive that which we need to forgive, to really come to a place of, um, accountability, uh, forgiveness, um, a deep cleansing, prioritizing, um, I need to see there, <laughs> uh, prioritizing and really looking at the last year and saying, what are my deepest lessons from this year? Cause, cause honestly, we're lucky, uh, in certain ways, uh, and I'm, really working at being um, uh, conscious about my words, choices, but we're really fortunate to be able to be alive right now and be able to experience this in an awakened way. Um, it doesn't mean that on December 14th or December 21st, 2020, that we're gonna go wiggle, 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 look at that, the whole world's changed. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that we've lived through globally as a global collective we've lived through um such a challenging transformative year that if we don't sit for a moment and really focus on the heart and the mind and really ask us, ourselves what was this angst for me all about or what was this grief all about or what is it that I'm, I'm letting go of? What is it that I have found within myself that is like epic and I didn't know, you know, just really going a little bit deeper. That's Pluto, go a little bit deeper. You know, so if you're a surface skimmer and surface skimmers, not good, bad, okay? But surface skimmers are the people where I, I will say like, hey, how are you? I'm good. Really, what's new? Nothing, you know? And maybe there's something happening, but it's kind of avoided. Go a little bit deeper, go beneath that, like, oh, I'm good, okay, why? What was so good? Just a little bit deeper so that you can feel a little bit deeper. You can just feel into that. You know, if you already feel love, you wanna feel deeper love. If you feel a bit of angst, maybe you wanna get to the root of it so you can pull it out, that sort of thing, okay? Um, and I want you to use this time, uh, again, to honor you know, change that comes up for you or that has come up for you. A lot of us have made some pretty big changes this year, uh, ones that we chose and ones that we didn't, you know, and some of us have lost, uh, lost some people and some things that were really important to us. Um, and so I want you to take this time to move through that and sit in it for just a little bit and just say, where am I feeling that grief? Where am I feeling that this? Where am I feeling that whatever? So that you can let it go so that you can move into this, you know, 12, 21, 2020, into this new era, into this new age when Saturn moves into Aquarius with a lighter backpack, you know? Um, I want you to, to take this time to um, be inspired. You know, I went out this morning, I was so tired and I still, had, and it was so cold. <laughs> of course, I'm not in the Midwest, so I'll just say it was cold for me. Uh, and I went out to watch the moon set and it was freezing, but it was so beautiful and so worth it. And I was so inspired. Do things that inspire you during this time. Um, and then allow yourself, you know, time to be quiet so that if you have something that needs to be um, engaged with in a certain way, you have that time to do it. So create buffers around yourself, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, we're moving into a really active time with this full moon uh, between now and the end of the year that is going to really require you to kind of dial up the um, aperture of your attention. So I want you to tune really deep in and play, 
pay close attention to your, your truth, what's true for you, um, your ambitions, your discipline, you know, what, what you have really uh, spent some time on this year. Okay, really important. This full moon is a, is a beautiful opportunity to um, create uh, something new and I want you to take it. I want you to take it. I don't want you to get stuck in that wheel of the past. Okay. Um, and on that note, I'm just going to share one more thing with you guys. Two more things, actually. So I'm, I'm making some changes <laughs> that I'm super excited about. One is that these recordings are going to be on YouTube. Uh, free from here and forever and IGTV on Instagram for here and forever. Uh, so I will be doing them for free. I uh, thank you so much to those of you who had paid for them in the years prior, uh, but I'm offering these up as just a, a small part of my work now <clears throat> and um, changing my website. I'm actually going to go back to this uh, changing my website. It's not going to change itself, but I'm, I'm changing the way my website looks. I've rebranded my logo and, all that kind of stuff. So I've taken this time to really look at like, what do I really want to do and how do I want to run my business? And yes, I'm a yoga teacher, um, but I'm also a master teacher. So I, I train teachers. I've been training teachers for years and I love it. And uh, in the middle of COVID, I turned my whole business into an online uh, protocol, just like a lot of other people. And uh, the teacher training has been astounding. I'm still partnering with Yoga Flow Up and SF because I do have my heart in SF. Um, and I'm also stepping into my healer role and my coach role. So I've been coaching people and doing healing sessions with people for years now, kind of on the side. Uh, and this time has given me the opportunity to actually focus in on it. Uh, where before I was traveling so much, I didn't really have the time to do that. Nor did I have the time to read as many charts or astrology charts for people that I really enjoy reading. So Lots more uh, time to move into that. So my website will launch um, on the 11th. Maybe, I might wait till after the eclipse. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, and all my classes are online. Uh, I'm partnering with an organization called Union Fit and everything's gonna go online. And so I'm really excited. And not to worry, I mean, we will all be together again at some point, but until then, I've jumped into the pool of, of being online. So uh, all these dates and stuff will all come up to you uh, in another way. But if, you, if you're not on my website, there it is. It's just my name, danadamara.com. And then of course, here's my sweet little um, Cosmic Mollus. This is my Gemini one uh, associated with the goddess Saraswati, Amazonite, Smoky Quartz. And then there's the, um, well, I blend these. This is my apothecary. I blend these lavender, lemongrass, rose, bergamot, peppermint. Smells so good. So good, so good, so good. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Awesome. So I just want to say thank you so much, you guys. Uh, this has been a year to remember. Um, and again, these recordings will be on YouTube uh, and IGTV for quite a long time. Uh, I won't close out 13 Moon Mystic until the end of the year. I'll keep it up until uh, December 31st. Um, in between now and then, I encourage you to love yourself, take care of yourself, and take some time during this full moon. Take some time to really drop in to those places that you've been too busy to deal with, okay? And, and know that I'm here for you to hold space. Um, as a friend, as a healer, as a coach, as an astrologist. If you want me to read your chart, let me know. Just reach out anytime. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day and um, take great care. Enjoy that moon, okay? Take care. Namaste.